All right, <clears throat> Dawn back again after trying some new settings. It didn't help, I can tell you that right now. Um, let's get over here in the um, screenshots. Now, here's where I, you know, was reading the, uh, the live encoder settings on the YouTube page. And uh, again, I'm streaming 1080p, 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'm doing 2500 bit rate, so it's within the. Wait a minute. Video bit rate range 3000 to 6000. Oh, I might have turned myself around because I said, okay, well, I'm doing 720, but I'm doing 720 into OBS. I'm streaming to YouTube. 1920 by 1080. 3,000 to 6,000. <clears throat> okay. Where's my app? Moves. It moved whenever I get out of full screen. Okay, it didn't move this time. Okay, let's look at that. I can't change that, but I can look at it. Output. Bitrate. 2,500. Okay. That's less than the minimum. That could have been something that changed in YouTube recently. What I did change, I was going to show the screenshots, but I'm in here now. So uh, I didn't change anything in the recording. The audio, I changed to 128K, uh, I guess it is, bit rate, kilobytes per second. Yeah. Uh, I changed to 128 because that's what YouTube says it supports. Right there. 44 1 hertz, 128 kilobytes per second stereo. And the streaming is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of throwing myself in circles because I'm streaming 720p from my cameras to the computer, and then OBS is sending out my palette is 1920 by 1080. <clears throat> and I am CBR somewhere in there. It showed, told you, you know, that I, I remember that, that it said you need to be CBR. Uh, rate control right there rate control CBR and you can do AAC or MP3 uh, seems like that would all actually be says enforced streaming service encoder settings and I have it checked so it seems like it would actually well I guess it can't just bring that up though so I guess what I'll do um, I'll just go bring it up to the minimum, 3,000. Oh, I can do that right now, it looks like. Can I do that while I'm streaming? It'll let me. Three, one, two, three. Three, one, two, three. Apply. It lets me do it. I guess that doesn't hurt anything, so. Um, now let's kind of look through. But yeah, changing to 128 kilobits per second didn't help. Um, I also went in there. Now I'll go and show you what else I did. What else have we got? We got CBR. Some of this other stuff I don't even see a place to, you know, change that in there. So I'll hit OK. Let's go back to the OBS. Well, we'll let OBS uh, recover from being edited while it's recording. Okay, now. Um, like that full screen. That's where I was confusing myself a while ago. I wasn't making it full screen. Hit F11, it goes full screen. Hit it again, and it goes out. Okay, so here's a screenshot of that area, and that's what got me thinking, oh, 3,000, 2,500. Oh, didn't see that a while ago. So now, here's where I was thinking maybe I might want to change that keyframe back to auto, but I haven't done that. I don't think that's got a thing to do with my problem, but you never know, so... Uh, set the audio, it was on 160 kilobits, I put it to 128, right there, a couple of screenshots of that, that's what it should be down there at the bottom, 128, okay, and then uh, I went ahead and exited OBS and, uh, and then uh, opened it back up, and I was just looking through the settings again, the triple checking before I started again, and um, uh, I tried it. I tried to hit streaming and it crashed. So anytime you see that, oops, that means I had tried it. 
uh, unless of course it ends up working but uh, and uh, it takes a while for that oops to come up the crash report to come up and uh, so I've already opened it back up and I'm in the settings when it happens so I may be anywhere in the settings when it happens or anywhere doing anything and then I also went in here to the advanced audio settings and I took out the see it's, it was on four tracks and I went ahead and took it out and this is before that cr uh, might have been after that cr I guess it was after that crash so I took out the tracks and just did one and two uh, and save that and uh, I guess I should listen back to this video and make sure I didn't mess anything up um, I haven't tried the extra mic I, I just what I was wondering uh, it, since it was kind of already set that way automatically I didn't do it manually that I remember I thought well maybe one mic is using one and two and the other mics using three and four and if I deselect them then it, it'll make that other mic silent you know and, and then OBS is mixing it down to stereo see that's what I was thinking so uh, I just remembered that why I thought that might ought to be that way so yeah let's I'll listen back I'll check I'll do a test with the lapel mic and see about that let's do it right now while I'm thinking about it so uh, okay we'll turn on the lapel okay, we'll turn on the lapel um, I guess I can't um, see I guess what's I can't going on see there. See what's going on there. Should be on. Should be on. Okay, we got them both. Okay, now. we got them both now. That's what I thought. You have an echo when I do that. Okay, now that's just the lapel mic. Okay, now if everything's working good, then we'll know that that didn't affect that in any way. Now we'll go back to the SM58. And uh, I hate that that keeps jumping all over, jumping out of my workspace whenever just because I open up I open up the settings and then when I click over here wherever I click it follows me the settings does the, the app doesn't but the settings does so <clears throat> back in my screenshots F11 okay so uh, now um, this is me exiting after doing some settings start streaming uh, that's showing that I click start streaming and that's showing that it's gone it crashed and then there's the crash report that came back up after a while after I opened it back up again okay that's the end of all that what is it that's the very that's a Windows screenshot oh that's not Windows that is uh, react OS it's an NT a Windows NT clone or uh, I guess they call it a clone it's a it's a product that's been going around for uh, going for 15 or plus years. Uh, they work very slowly, but they work at it very hard, and they keep working on it. Um, it it's just you know it looks a lot like uh, XP, um, but if you wanted to use it, it's fully open source. They're trying to completely rebuild everything, and so if you wanted to run Windows apps on on a machine uh, in 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 T style, you know, or XP style operating system. It would do it, except for you have to start from scratch and install everything that supports everything. Um, drivers, uh, I don't know, .NET, you know, these whatever you might need to make your applications run. So it's not for the light-hearted. <laughs> it's not not an e simple thing to use. And some things, uh, I was just playing with it in VirtualBox, and things don't generally run as well in VirtualBox, so you can't just go by that. But it wouldn't. I tried a couple of apps in it, some that I thought might not need any extra stuff, and I don't remember. I think only one out of three or four ran. I don't remember what the heck I was doing now. But again, you need it on real hardware to see what it's really going to do. I've messed with it. I've got a CD that I burned up years ago, and I've messed with it before because there's no you don't have to worry about licensing and all that junk, you know. So uh, if you just have some Windows app, you're a Linux lover like me, and you just want to run a few Windows apps here and there, that might be something to get into thinking more and more about getting back into that thing and seeing if I can now that XP is not going to get I just been using XP in a virtual machine but here this year and now or in a couple of months is going to quit getting security updates um, yes I'm getting security updates because I set mine up as a uh, as a uh, enterprise system as like a win term when when the win, win, win term Windows terminal type setup <coughs> so um in the yeah, you set it up in the uh, registry that way, and you'll still get those updates. But anyway, um, uh, 
Okay, so I haven't fixed anything. I was just showing what's going on. What else can I try? Okay, I've tr I've gone through everything in the settings. Did I? Oh, I just got through changing one more thing. What did I change? Uh, oh, the bit rate. Yeah, that could be it. It's very very plausible. Um, I'm going to exit OBS though. I'm not going to just uh, hit stream because then I'll lose all the. It won't save anything. You can't just go up here and say save. You know your settings. The settings that you do automatically save when you exit. Is what happens? Some of them. A lot. Some of them. Like I did hit apply, but if you crash it by hitting start streaming, it probably it's very most 99.9% chance it's going to lose it. It's, it has every time that I've actually known for sure what was going on, you know. So I'm going to uh, stop recording, exit, restart it, and then I'll try. You know, of course I can't do it during a video. Well, I can, but it's I don't think it's a uh, it's my video. It might break my video. Is what I'm afraid of. Uh, it, I have seen that happen before when an application crashes. So far, it's been okay, but what happens if by breaking it, I mean it doesn't have an end mark in the file, and so the video will play in VLC, but sometimes it won't work. Well, you upload it to YouTube, and it won't work right, you know, and stuff like that. Now, I've uploaded several lately. Of, of I just hit start streaming, and it crashed it, and I don't know which ones it was because they all worked because I've been doing that. I've been uploading some of these videos. Well, I've been uploading all my videos for week or two now so I guess it's just been a week it feels like a month <clears throat> but anyway instead of them being there when you get done you know when you're live streaming <coughs> all right I'm gonna uh, stop the video and then uh, <clears throat> you know close OBS and open it back up